a code of conduct for me, the guy who's running this podcast. I'm meteorologist Don Paul, and this is Don Paul's Bits of Blather on weather, climate, and some humor from time to time. Some ground rules I've already been following in the first two weeks of this growing podcast. I am an operational meteorologist. I've been doing this for 46 or 47 years, most of it in broadcasting, but that does not make me a heavyweight research scholar. Big difference. So I endeavor to keep aware of what it is I don't know. And in any science, it's at least as important to know what you don't know as it is to know what you know or think you know. And so before I begin speaking to you, I do try to research and seek out if there is a consensus on what may seem to some people as a controversy. Uh, Other people may say, oh, I I get that. I've known that a long time. Uh, But because research requires a little time, while my speech style may sound freewheeling, I've done some work before I open up this microphone. And uh, what I mean by not a serious researcher, well, I don't have the master's or PhD. I don't have the academic chops to teach a course in meteorology at a college or university that offers meteorology as a major or a public research university like my alma mater or Penn State or Michigan. Uh, But I can talk to you about it. And what I want you to feel some confidence in, pardon the preposition, is that it's not just a Don Paul editorial you're hearing. And I will let you know if there's no consensus, if something is still 50-50 in the scientific community or 60-40. I may not give you exact numbers, but uh, I'm not here to cherry pick and find things to bolster an argument or an editorial. I'm trying to lay out the science as best as I can research it. There are summary literature uh, items I can survey. I've done a lot of continuing education over the years, and it's been necessary, especially in climate science, because when I was an undergrad, It had been known since the early 19th century, yes, that long ago, that greenhouse gases existed. And since the mid-19th century, experiments were being conducted showing that carbon dioxide was not transparent to heat and could trap heat. And in 1896, a great Swedish scientist, Svante Arrhenius, no, that's not on the Blue Book exam, actually wrote a paper. He went on to become a Nobel laureate and chairman of the Nobel Institute. He wrote a more defined paper on the greenhouse effect, and he predicted the warming, which would begin to accelerate during the 20th century, especially later in the 20th century, due to the increase in carbon dioxide being emitted by the Industrial Revolution activities. And uh, his predictions have turned out Uh, as an underlying foundation to be very accurate. But when I was in college, climate change was known, but it wasn't that hot an academic topic. So our climatology was climatology, why the climate is the way it is globally and regionally, what elements in nature led to certain climates to prevail in certain parts of the globe, but not a whole lot of time was spent on future climate change. Of course, that has changed. So I've been, uh, like many of my colleagues, able to take many short courses, both at weather conferences from the American Meteorological Society and online courses from the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research, which enables people like me to take academic courses, some with some exams involved to prove that you've mastered the material and to continue to grow intellectually in your area. And and the disciplines involved in climate change are not just climate science, but there's also atmospheric physics, atmospheric chemistry, hydrology, oceanography, and of course, meteorology is in there too. Uh, so uh, we have to become something of a generalist, but All I'm basically saying is I'm not really setting out to do editorials. I'm trying to lay things out, sometimes on complex topics, following the scientific method. And uh, by the way, consensus doesn't automatically prove, okay, that's it. That's all there is we need to know. Uh, Sometimes a consensus goes down the wrong road. People told Jonas Salk in the early 1950s that his idea about a polio vaccine was going to be a dead end. That consensus disappeared when he came up 
with the vaccine. So I think you catch my drift there. So I just wanted to assure you that I'm going to do my best. It certainly won't be perfect to keep it honest and keep it well-founded on evidence-based peer-reviewed science. Thanks for following this podcast. I hope you will share it and tell others about it if you like it. And by the way, on the Spotify platform, you can communicate with me. Uh, You can criticize me. You can give me suggestions for other podcast topics. I'd love to hear from you. I've only heard from a few, even though I've gotten some good growth in these first two weeks. So please join in, and I will talk to you very, very soon.